Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodity Show. We are recording here Saturday, the 19th of November. Thanksgiving is next week, hard to believe. My name is Ben Maldonado, and as always, I'm here with my partner, Barry Hedarachi. How you doing, Barry? Doing pretty good, Ben. <laughs> you ready for Thanksgiving? Ready. I was ready last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really, really interesting stuff in my chart review this week which we'll cover, you know, after you go over the the charts that you're covering. And every week, Barry covers the S&P, bonds, crude oil, gold, dollar, the euro, and copper. This, and I generally cover the commodities. This week, you know, I try and identify the big trend. The big trend in commodities is up, so I'll only look for long setups in the commodity complex. And this week, there's none. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you when we go through using examples of several commodity charts, what it kind of looks like is happening. Uh, it really looks like there was some sort of uh, inflection or change this week. And, you know, we're going to have to sit and wait and wait for these commodities to set up uh, for the proper thing. One that we've covered all along is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin continues to hold on by its fingernails to this half square. Uh, by the way, all the levels, uh, the full square and half square levels that we refer to are on a Google Doc spreadsheet, which uh, we'll post the link to when we post the link to the video. So you can refer to those. But this, um, you know, Bitcoin has been weak and quiet for the longest period of time. You know, with that FTX debacle, we got a, a push down and now we're sort of making a mini fractal of what we did here, right? Push down and then triangulate. Here we push down and now we're really tightly triangulating. I mean, look at the size of these bars. Yeah. Uh, you know, a break is coming. Yeah, the break is coming. I mean, it's just a matter of when this odds are, are heavily in favor of this half square, you know, at around 15, seven, 15,700 breaking. So we're just, we're just waiting for that break because that's going to dictate you know what we do either it breaks and gets back up and we can say okay that's the flush and and you know now we can start looking bullish or we break get stuck below and you know the down cycle continues but weak weak is the word to describe it you know there's, there's really nothing else to add there any anything else from from your perspective barry on bitcoin well other than it's been perfectly stair-stepping and well, I was looking at our target, seeing, you know, are we going to hit it or are we going to get through it? And mm -hmm. and um, looks like that around that neighborhood should be the next stop. I mean, a full square would be the ideal place. Sure. Coming down. Uh, but I know, I remember we got that target uh, a couple of different ways. We have no signs of a bottom yet. And we need, we got work to do yet on the downside. It's just yeah. letting it play out and, and using the squares to figure out, you know, where's a good, good odds that it will bottom. Right. Anyway, let's uh, let me throw it over to you and let's jump in. There's a lot to look at because the the ramifications of what I'm seeing in the commodity market are certainly going to play out in in the other markets in the ES and in bonds. You can talk about that later, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Great, great. All right. There's the mini. All right. Where to start? <laughs> well, you know, let's start with this chart. I shared this on Twitter at the day of this high. You know, let me zoom in a little bit. I, it's funny you just put that chart up because I was going to ask you, Barry, do you have anything at the high? Because I'm showing some important <laughs> stuff came in on that 11.15 high. Yeah, we have a little bit at the high. There you go. Um, well, we, we, we have the square and we have the timing. It looks good. We had a number of time cycles expiring along that line there. Mm -hmm. And... The idea is just like we were talking about the low in, I mean, the high in the dollar, you know, the 90 week high that we've been talking about, you know, here, similar cycles, not as strong as the 90 week, but we have 90 high to high. We have 45 low to high and some other numbers. So the key here is, you know, can this high get taken out or is this a place to, uh, are we looking at a substantial sell off coming off of this high looking at the cycle i would say probability is kind of a favor this to be a substantial high like a decent high 
I'm 100 percent with you on that. Uh, meaning, because of the 90, we get 225 from there. We have um, 315 from the high, uh, 45 low to high. You know, we got 33 from the false break high, and uh, we squared out. So it's it's okay. It's three quarters by a quarter. That it's fairly good. So yeah. how do we play this? Well, let's go back to let's go back to our chart. So just to catch up from last week, we were left with these two numbers. I said 3940 and uh, 4038 were the two numbers to watch. Uh, the idea was if we could hold above 3940, we should go challenge 4038. And pretty much what we did, we held above 3940, challenge 4038, failed to test above that, and we sold off and pretty much um, got boxed in by the two levels we've had there. Mm -hmm. And so overall, if you look at the if you look at the big picture, it's it's you would say it's in a strong position. Now, if you didn't see the squares, other timing cycles coming in, you would think, okay, this is a this is in a pretty good position. Let's move forward. So going for next week, we're going to watch these levels. We really want to watch is thirty nine forty now because that's sort of the balance point. And if we hold this 39.40 uh, Monday, Tuesday, with Thanksgiving coming up, we're probably going to go up and test 40.38 or just blow it out into, into the half square or into 41.40. If we fail 39.40, that would pretty much confirm that this high is substantial because, you know, we had one, two days down, we have a counter trend. And if we turn down Monday, we have a one day pullback. Even if it's Tuesday, we have a two-day pullback, and if you reverse, those are those tend to produce good sell-offs. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the one to watch. All right. There isn't much more other than the square that I we looked at just a little while ago. Mm -hmm. Just watch thirty-nine forty is the key. Knowing what we do know is we know this, uh, number of cycles expired up here. And here's the first counter trend. We set it up on Friday because we took out the Thursday's high. So now Monday, either we take out Friday low or we make a higher high and then then the Monday low would be the one to look for a reversal. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what we want to see here. Any, um, you have any questions or comments on this? The only thing that uh, we were briefly talking before we started recording multiple times since we made the high uh or in early 2022 in january mm -hmm. counter trends have been 23 days mm -hmm. we did 23 days at the 1115 high right well Look, that, that's, and a half, right perfect it's a yeah it's a low to it's a low to high type of reading so mm -hmm. it's just more evidence for what you know to corroborate with what you're saying about you know we see whether this this um you know this high we just made is is, is of significance mm -hmm. yeah yeah I'm, uh, I'm i'm with that that, that sounds about right mm -hmm. so we'll confirm with 3940 and see how it plays out that, that's really the key level to watch and if it goes like i said then we can probably expect a little bit more mm -hmm. of a show moving on to the weekly s p Square 52, we found support. Boy, this uh, this fork is a little too much. I don't think we need all that. <laughs> all right. So Square 52, we found a square and a half down. We found support. And and, and we had all those other cycles expire. So we called that out. Um, and so the 52 square, 52 degrees down from the high became resistance. And we um, dancing right there now. Well, we closed right on it. Before mm -hmm. that, you know, we pushed a little above, came below, pushed above again. Really couldn't, you know, we we closed below the open. So it's, you know, of course, it doesn't make it easy, but that's all right. <laughs> right. But we have the key levels now. Basis weekly, the number to watch is this thirty-eight ninety-six. 
Okay, that, that's really important. If that goes, then we know basis weekly, this there's a high in place and we could have two, three, you know, weeks down like we've had before on all these down legs, right? Mm -hmm. So that's possible. It, it's really interesting because we had a good low come in um, and now we have the first, I mean, we have the counter trend, we have the counter trend off that low and we have a bunch of cycles expiring here. I mean, so between these two points, to me, it's really interesting because we almost have equal number of cycles expiring at the low and the high. Mm -hmm. So, so you, it makes you wonder like, well, which way is it going <laughs> to, which one's a stronger one, right? Right. How's it going to resolve? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to let, I mean, we know we don't have to trade the corner or catch the corner, but we want to be able to identify the corner. You know, then we can, trading is between the two points, right? So mm -hmm. long as we can know where to look for one, that's half the battle. And and we and we found it here early on, and now we were expecting this high to come in because of all the cycles we talked about it last week and and, and the week before. So now it's left to price to see how price wants to resolve it. So basis weekly, watch thirty eight ninety six. If that support that holds, well, it's probably going to consolidate here or rally. If we take this out, then I think we're in for a much bigger correction. Let's say. Or mm -hmm. consolidation. That's my take. So 3940, if that goes 3825, basis daily. So that's kind of the range here. But if this holds Monday, Tuesday, and we're pushing up against 384 uh, 4038, it's probably uh, a stronger market going mm -hmm. into the weekend. All right. Good markers. Good yeah, we need the markers here. We we have the cycles identified. Now we need the markers to show that as that that is uh, in the right direction mm -hmm. so like here you know we had this high coming in and here's the first counter trend boom it was a good trade here's a counter trend it was a good trade you see mm -hmm. so we had the counter trend here but on these highs we didn't have a bunch of cycles expiring it was just pushing up against resistance we were looking for pullbacks so here we had some cycles come in and a square from the low that's why we're shifting i mean that's our two positions right when we get a higher low we're operating uh, in different mode than once we confirm the higher low, then we get into more of a trending mode and we trade that accordingly. So we're, mm -hmm. we're kind of in the uh, identification mode here <laughs> and we use the levels to help get focused on that. All right. Excellent. All right. Let's moving on to bonds. We found some support. Uh, down at the lows, this 270 is very important. And, uh, you know, it took a couple of three days to test it and we broke above it. Now, you know, it's possible we hang up above it till the next uh, event. And we're at about 124. We talk about 124 is really the sort of the pivot point here. And you can see, if I were to zoom in here, you can see how price, when it got to, the um, 270 it held a couple of days, but once it broke it, it went very quickly to the quarter of the square, rallied quarter of the square. Then we came up, stuck in here for three, four days, and we broke to the upside. So in, on any kind of a pullback, 124 is the key. Overall, it looks like the bonds have more to go. This is not going to put in this quarter square. I, I, I really don't see that putting in a low uh, from that high that we're watching this. From that mm -hmm. high, it just mm -hmm. doesn't seem right. <laughs> right. Uh, we should probably do the three sixty. Right. Not not dramatic enough for that type of high. Exactly. And and this is some kind of um, well, it, it's a counter trend like we talked about last week. These are all counter trends, and that's how we're going to have to treat that. So looking at this, even if we take the secondary, the secondary highs, two seventies down here. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can see we're pushing up against a half coming off of that. So we're not quite done. So we know that. So we're not hollering about a bunch of um, cycles expiring. Just right. It's not a new bull market in bonds. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We have more to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's not get hurt. Let's wait for the right position here. I mean, it'd be great. You can see how the quarter lines are so powerful in this chart. You can see quarter yeah. you know it was a quarter up here that found resistance right mm -hmm. so the quarters are working so let's watch 124 
if we get up to the 130, close to 130 along that line, that will be the next uh, really big point of resistance. In the meantime, 124 really is a support. And if we take that out, maybe we're, we're starting the next leg. So we really got to watch that mm -hmm. now. And looking at the weekly bonds, we talked about this last couple of weeks, a big square that's setting up. It's a square of 144. It's 144 weeks by 144 44. degrees down. And, um, you know, we haven't, we didn't quite touch it. And the level is 114. So we'll see. It, it's, it's, it's basically having a counter trend. Like I said, we didn't have a confirmed low. So we have to guess that, you know, it's a counter trend just like these other ones that we've had before. Where's your timing, Barry, on that 144? Well, that comes in about middle of December, December 16th. It's interesting because there's some timing on bonds that I was I wrote down in my notes for 1212, which would be the week of the 16th. It's close. It's in that, you know, give or take a bar, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and you can see how that coming off that high, you can see the support down here. You can see this entire area here, right? Massive. Years, years. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like a decade of support. Well, the funny thing is, you know, we found this from the high, but now mm -hmm. if you didn't have a square, you could still say, well, you know, that looks like a good support area because we, mm -hmm. you know, we broke out, came back, we tested it. for taking yeah. off, right? <clears throat> yeah. But after we take it down from the high, we can see the 144 is pretty much, you know, exact on that, in that area. So dead on it. Yep. So, so this 114, you guys will see. As we, you know, check this every week, it's going to end up becoming an important, um, important level. And and if that gets taken out, that's when we'll probably get down to, get down to par. Yeah. Yep. We'll see. All right. For now, for short term, you'd say you're bullish on bonds because that's what I'm seeing. Is that there's there's there's, you know, the counter trend is not done, and and you could super short term, you could be bullish on bonds. Well, we had we we had that low come in uh, and the higher low. So let's say one, two, three. So we're mm -hmm. probably going to chop around for a bit, and either we're going to do go, run for a five and test up in the one thirty, or or fail on the end of the fourth and go back down. Mm -hmm. I would say it's, it's I'm I'm not um, I just hard for me to mentally be bullish on bonds, but. <laughs> I would because of the big that, picture. Absolutely agree. Big picture, yeah. you can't. but I would say it, the, the bonds are firm about one forty five. You know, so that's like semi bullish. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, it, it one forty four is the key. So it, above that, it's on somewhat firm ground. Meaning, at a minimum, it can consolidate above that. Mm -hmm. All right. So leave it at that. Looking at crude, the key here is that we're still holding the low that we got at the end of the end of the breaking of the arc, you know, right before you broke the arc here. And not that I'm going to play this arc till the end of time, you know, this has a, <laughs> <laughs> it right. has a useful uh, life. Yeah. It has a useful life expiration date and, and, but it's good for reference. So I'm keeping it on there for reference. We'll see how that works out. Barry notice, look at the high that, that led to the sell-off, mm -hmm. you know, the, the recent high, uh, the November oh. high. Right. It's pennies above the previous high. Yeah. yeah. Classic false break. And that's the sort of thing I'm seeing in in multiple, multiple commodity markets is that, you know, we, we were getting bullish. They pushed up. They made false breaks and did hard reversals. Right, right. It's right. the it's the usual move they do. Like, right, they, they, they push it up, get, get you thinking it's going one way, and then and then they gun it the other way. The true move is the other yeah. way. Well, we talk about false breaks a lot. So here's a really classic one, right? That's yep. That's what that is. And when that happens, you can at least get three days, good fast three days down. One one day counter trend, super weak. So you can sell that. And there's that, the, mm -hmm. the next leg. Mm -hmm. So it brings us back to this low in September. The, the key now is, you know, if this holds, this becomes a higher low. And, you know, bonds will kind of be firm up around 144 uh going back to the big picture you know we 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 had this 
we had this low come in and we were watching these levels. You know, first it was 83. Can we hold above 83? All right, fine. We ran up, came down, held 83, ran up again. The number above was 91. And you can see, we, you know, both tests just really couldn't hold above it. And, and you can't say they didn't try. And, and the fact that they both failed, you know, it's not time yet. And when it's time, you'll see we'll hold above 83 again. We'll hold above 91. And and once we clear 97, then then we go. So we're kind of boxed in. We're kind of boxed in. And really the box, you know, technically the box, at least the way I drew it, should be right there. Uh, but maybe the box is here, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So that that's the box. And now going into next week, well, the 7350 is really the key support level that we were looking for over here. That would have been great if we went down there and took care of it. But now we're here, 7350 is really the support outside of 78. You know, 78 is, it's, it's like 78 and a half, but that's 144 degrees up from a 2020 lows. So it's a key level. And I think if we can somehow hold about the 78 level, um, like we talked about earlier, you know, it could firm up, it could consolidate and, and take another shot. But watch 83. If you drop 83 on your charts and, and 7350 and the 78, you can see the patterns forming within that. So basically we need to hold 78 and take out 83 to the upside. Mm -hmm. Or we get stuck below 83, take out 78, and we get down to 73. That's sort of the play. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly looks like, you know, we, we, we had a good run up and, and we corrected nicely. We held at the 45 degree line. And this is okay. You know, low is still intact. We have a higher low in place. Sort of a 45 weeks low to low. It's not a new low, but it's right there. It's okay. And we just wait for that to resolve. Either it's going to have to resolve to the upside, or we can take out this forty-five and resolve to the downside. That's um, and that's pretty much at seventy-eight. That's that's sort of the two choices that we have. Mm -hmm. Gold. We um, see what do we have? Seventy square seventy-two. We had support around sixteen forty-six level. Took out sixteen seventy-six. Uh, we were looking for resistance, obviously, at the square of 72. And Found it. Came right into that last week. Mm -hmm. And we're pulling back. So it's basically the same deal. We want, you know, if we can hold above 1730, I would say it's uh, very bullish. Mm -hmm. And above 1767, given the pattern, I think we're firm in here. It'll be more of a consolidating pattern. Uh, bullish down here if we can consolidate mm -hmm. but 1730 would be the um, ideal place to hold for it to rally uh, obviously last week's high it's even more important but uh, we'll talk about that when we get there for now we want to see if this consolidate this pull pull back and end above 1730 or not it's a little messy if you look at the bonds you know last three four five months it's it's basically sideways, so it, it it's getting ready. It's not quite there yet. I mean, we had a good run about a year ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now we have to wait for it to reset. Mm -hmm. Looking at the weekly gold, well, we're we're holding about seventeen fifty. Really couldn't, you know. To me, it's it's the um, the seventeen sixty eight is, is really kind of the 67 is kind of the number to get above and you can see last week we went right into that and this week we um opened there ran up came back sold off and we, we were below that so clearly that's the level to watch see if we can tick above that or not we'll wait and see in the meantime anything above the 180 degree level up from the lows are okay it's on firm grounds so and we did have a low come in in gold also so we're, we're kind of watching to see get, get through with the song and dance if this is the low 
So let it finish its thing. Uh, not quite ready. We're going to watch the next pullback. That's kind of where gold is at this point. And copper, copper did pretty well. Came off higher than 330 level, went up to the half square. You know, that was the next test. We really couldn't get it high enough to settle above it. So we, we uh, ran up into it and um, we're in a counter trend. So pretty much have a low, low to low 90, 90 uh, days. And so it looks like a consolidation and ideally it should come, I would say, um, you know, right into here, let's say like five, 545, five, three, I mean, 345, 340, 340, 345 looks like a decent place for a counter trend. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if we can hold above this, if this is still bullish in the long run. And we'll have to, we can trade it that way. Looking at the weekly copper, it's okay. Weekly, uh, we, you know, we're making higher lows and higher highs. We're having a, a counter trend, could be two, three weeks, possibly. But up until it takes out the 90, anything, any kind of counter turn up here is bullish. So we'll watch the daily to see how those levels work out. In the meantime, this is uh, this is okay. It, it's nothing to. It, it's just a, I'm I'm treating it as a counter trend again because copper also had lows coming. I mean, cycles expiring at this low, so it looks looks pretty good. Next, we look at the dollar. We well, you guys, if you haven't um, been following, check the last couple of sessions and and you can kind of catch up on things because we we covered all this coming into the square the counter trends and all of that so we were looking for weakness and we got it and i was talking about this low being taken out before it's all said and done uh, haven't quite done that so for now we're going to treat the dollar being weak below 107.25 and we're looking for you to at least test this low around 104 and a half, let's say, mm -hmm. okay? Looking at the weekly dollar, we had this squared out. We talked about it in the last few sessions. I'm not gonna go into that. And the sell off, we were looking for a square uh, test of the half square. We got it. Around 106, we got that test and, and a good recovery. So it's possible that we have that in place, right? Mm-hmm. And that looks and it's very healthy. Everything looks looks good. Nothing not to like here, and and very bullish. So if we can hold above this one hundred six level, and on the daily basis we take out, we're able to take out this uh, one hundred seven to the upside and settle above. I think next run is next run should be getting ready on the dollar. Mm -hmm. And looking at the euro, very interesting. I was thinking, you know, this. Um, Here's we have an A, B, C, D, one, two, and a three. So it's possible we do a four above this 216 square. Mm -hmm. And that means consolidating above 102. And if we do that, I think, uh, you know, uh, euro should be in a decent shape, at least to um, get up to the half square, 105, 106, and test up in that level. If we can hold the 102, 102 and a half, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if we get under that, then I think we're back in this mess and, you know, anything is, uh, everything's on the table, including making new lows, which I think it's going to have to end up doing at some point. But for now, uh, it's okay. Uh, we'll just watch, see what the price, act, price action is telling us. So the key level to watch is, is one or two and a half to see if we can hold above it. If it hold above it, then we can probably go challenge much higher, half square or even up here. So we'll leave that at leave leave it there, and the weekly euro, not much change from last week, other than the fact that you know we were looking at this ninety nine two level was the major level to hold above. Obviously, we blew right up above it, and this one third square was around one hundred two, and holding above that is positive, and we, and we did that nicely. So it's, it's possible, like I said, if we hold about the levels we talked about on the daily, it's possible we go up and test 
on a basis weekly, this 108 area, I mean, that would be the next major uh, resistance um, and all and sell off of there. Now, all this is a result of that big cycle that expired in the dollar and in the euro, which is a 90 week cycle. Mm -hmm. So you would expect something big to manifest out of that. You can see we broke that really steep angle and we're up here. So at a minimum, let's just also look at the 90 degrees down from that high, you know, 105, 106, 105, 8. Mm -hmm. This is also weekly uh, resistance. But this 90 week, you have to respect. So really the next weekly pullback will be the one to really watch, you know. Uh, so that's kind of what we're where we're at. And it's 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 the biggest counter trend in this 90 week period. And that's probably going to fake a lot of people out thinking that low is probably the low. And it could be, but I, I my gut feeling is it's not. Agreed. So we'll, we'll just play it by ear. And, and the markets will always fool everybody, you know, before it's all said and done. And this was just too easy. And, and the 90-week cycle is pretty good to finish that up. So that's all I got. And uh, Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. And we'll put it back to you and you can cover all the commodities and all the insights you got after scanning through everything. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Ben. Tell us what's going on there. Well, uh, it's screaming pretty loudly at me. Um, I see it couldn't get through the square, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the key, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we found a low. There was your fault, you know, Pushed down, did a false break with a previous low, immediately retraced. On the pullback, we held the full square. So you say, okay, that's bullish. We should have more upside. Well, we got it, right? We we were looking at this half square as sort of a, a bull bear line. Uh, when Once we got above that, we said, okay, let's test the full square. Well, there's your first test. It kind of looks like the inverse of this here, doesn't it? Exactly. So... The other thing to note on this chart, well, so the level, the key level for the coming week is is 11,900. Below that, the odds are favoring that the counter trend is over and we're, you know, going to be doing something different. If we can get above it and sit on top of it, there's higher to go. Um, like, like a lot of markets I was talking about, you know, this has the looks of a false break, right? We went up, couldn't hold it closed right at the line and then the next two three days we're under it yeah you know, that's that's not that's not what the bulls want to see they got to get up on top of that line or minimally they gotta they gotta hope for they get a higher you know another higher low on the pullback that's the other other option mm -hmm. for the bulls one thing I spoke about briefly when when you were reviewing the yes was this 23 day periodicity that we've seen for counter trends you know, since the top on the, on the NQs, the top was in November on ES, we got the top in January, but here's low to high 23 days, 23 trade dates, low to high 23 trade dates. What do we do just here? Low to high 23 on the nose. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something to watch. The key levels are the full square here. And then if we do make make a pullback, we want to watch this half square right in the 11,280 area. Those are your two key levels as far as uh, the NQs go. Right. Um, so whether this is significant, we, uh, you know, I believe it's significant because of the, the reverberations I'm seeing in multiple markets, you know, across commodities, bonds, uh, you know, ES, uh, the dollar, there's a lot of action that occurred this past week, you know, anywhere from the 14th, depending on the market, the 14th to the 17th, where we saw highs and reversals or lows and reversals. And it's the, the, something happened here. How significant it is, as you were saying, you know, price is going to tell us shortly in the next few days. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add here on NQs? No, we're good. We got the cycles in. We got the levels. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah. Um, now, now, as far as the commodities go, 
what I've basically been doing since this commodity bull started and we you know, have been doing these broadcasts is trying to bring your attention to bullish setups in the commodities because they were they were aligned with the bigger cycle, which says commodities are going much higher, which is still in place and still intact. You know, we still think we're in the midst of a commodity bull, just sort of working out a correction leg here on a bigger picture. This week, there's absolutely not one of them that's that's set up with what I would call, hey, it's jump in time. You know, it's ready to go. It's set up. It's it's ready for a bullish trade. Right. What what's happened is we called lows, you know, a couple months ago in in a lot of these commodity markets, depending on which market it was, it might have been, you know, September, August, September. If it was that was the grains, if it was the the energies or others, it might have been October. You know, they were all looking like they were making lows. And then when we saw a thrust up and and we were trying to to see what the next pullback looks like. Based on what happened this past week, it looks like almost all of those markets were it was some sort of end of a of a of a third type wave down or third mm -hmm. thrust down. And we may have just completed some sort of fourth. So what's coming next is either a failed fifth or an actual fifth. Uh, and that, I think, is what we're looking at across almost all of these markets, that ambiguity that I had on, you know, what was, the, was that the end of the correction in the commodities or was it just the end of that leg and then we have to do something else and then do another leg? The probabilities have now tilted towards you know, we still got lows to hammer out in these markets. Some, it could be significantly lower. Others, it could be marginally lower or false break type low, you know, and a failed fifth try on the way down. Mm -hmm. So with that, given that backdrop, I want to just sort of highlight a couple markets and, and show you what, you know, what I'm seeing, not only in those markets, but in all of these markets, there's similar types of patterns that are that are beginning to unfold. So, so the bottom line, let, let me just just recap before we go into it. It's mm. it looks like we're going to get a deflationary wave, right? Some kind of deflationary scare is coming in the commodity complex. I don't know whether it's going to be you know because of supply or demand or what, but there's some kind of deflationary wave which is being corroborated by what's happening in bonds. You know, bonds are looking firm, right? Not that they're super, they're not bullish on a bigger picture, but they're firm in the short term mm -hmm. uh, and, and may actually continue to move higher, but they're, they're at least firm. And in the risk markets of like, you know, Bitcoin and the NQs and ES, the potential is there. You know, Barry reviewed the, the levels on ES really, really well. You know, when it takes out a certain level, okay, that was, a, we did have the significant high, the bear market rally is over and the next leg is starting. That kind of, you know, signaling that the charts are giving us mm -hmm. fits with this commodities aren't done to the downside yet. That, that I'm, that the message that I got with my review this week. So let's, let's take a look at a few and see, and hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. Hey, Barry talked about, about gold. The only thing I'll add to here is we had the false break there. Remember, we look for that in commodities. And then we get this, <clears throat> excuse me, get this strong move up. And it stopped right where it should, which is on the full square, right? And it looks like something finished, like this leg looks to have finished here, right? Because we had one, two, three down days. Um, if it doesn't turn around real quickly, then we're into the, the correction. What we're looking to see is, did gold make a big enough move here to where we can put in a higher low? Mm -hmm. It's possible, right? Because you had a nice, nice straight up move off of that low, off of that false break. So it looks like we've got enough room. Hopefully we can, we can do it on this half square, which is call it 1696. Mm -hmm. uh, pull back to there would be perfect. Otherwise, you know, the monthly support is like around 1668, which would be right in here. 
So that's what we're looking for in gold, right? So the, the deflationary wave I'm talking about would be this move here, whatever this pullback looks like. Gold, I think, has a decent shot at not having to take out the low and put in another low. But, you know, with the way these markets work, maybe it does a false break and we stop on the full square. Mm -hmm. You know, it just cleans out all these stops and, and we come back to this full square around 1600. But we'll see. Here's silver. The thing I want to point out to in, in silver, why I wanted to show you silver is we did a completed ABC off that low. So this, you could say, is a completed leg, right? Because we did an equal move, A, B, C, D, into that little hot cluster of, of the high right here. Mm -hmm. And just to boot, you know, you had these highs here. Oh, we're making another high. We're breaking out. No, you're not. That's a false break. I th I'm confident that, and, ha and the, I think the odds favor that silver's leg up, the first leg up, of whatever this new phase is after we got this low ended at that high. And now we're doing some sort of pullback. Look where the first pullback ended up so far, right? Held on the, on the half square, which is excellent. Yeah. If we go sideways here, that would be fantastic. Even if we come down and put in a higher low, right? You could come all the way down to the full square and still put in a higher low. So it's bullish, but it, but this, Tying in with the cycles that Barry enumerated and, and the cycle work that I do, that this, because it's appearing in so many different markets, appears to be some sort of end of a cycle there and something else started here. Mm -hmm. Anything else you got to add on silver? That's a good good um, good take. Okay. But that half square, boy, I can tell you what, that's a solid line there if you look at the past huge huge spot i mean listen and, and it doesn't mean it has to collapse it could go sideways which would be fine could chop around in here which would be fine just burn off the time of this the fact that this cycle this bullish cycle ended and now something different's happening it doesn't mean price has to collapse we just got to get through the time cycle associated with the with the beginning of this new cycle so that that's silver and it, again i'm seeing it in multiple markets Take a look at uh, at this. Barry talked about copper. Look at the similarity with silver, right? A, right. B, C, D up. It's a square. <laughs> it's the square. Made a new high here. Couldn't hold it. And where did we end up? Right on the half square. So the jury's out what's, what's coming next. What we do know is our expectation or our hope of trying to catch a third up, right, with the, which a massive move up. That's not happening right now, right? Because we, we finished something here, strong reaction off of it, strong rejection at the full square. Now we got to see where, where this next pullback goes. You know, theoretically, we could make another higher low. We could also come down and take out this low. If this deflationary wave that, you know, is sort of the charts are telling me is coming happens, could we take out these lows? Yeah. Maybe, again, maybe some sort of, clean out mm -hmm. false break um grab the stops and then failed fifth and then we get then we go and we got a good bottom so that again i'm just showing you examples to to um sort of make the point of, of what i'm seeing across multiple different markets let's look at uh, another one here's crude barry talked about crude the big thing, and I brought it up when he was looking at his chart, false break here, strong move off of it. Right. Are we gonna are we gonna be able to put in a higher low? Who knows? We closed below the full square. First time since over in here where we did this little cluster of you know a false break. So there's probably more weakness coming here. You know, maybe we come down and we got it, we gotta test this half square. That would be around 70. Uh, I know important support on crude on a weekly basis and a monthly basis is in the like 76 to 77 area mm -hmm. you know, right in here where we found support before. So if we lose that, yeah, could they, could they scurry people out and, you know, chase people out, grab some stops? It's, it looks like that's the setup across the multiple markets is that they want to do. 
They want to they want to get people thinking that inflation is dead, the commodity bull market is over. You know, as they accumulate these things for the next leg like, higher, we, we want to hear those headlines. We want to see those headlines. Absolutely, because the the monthlies are still really, really strongly supporting that this bull market in commodities has got more to run. Let's look at another one. Again, you know, we we zeroed in on that bottom. We thought that was a good bottom. That we had squares. We had a little timing. Beautiful move off of it. But then look what happens. We made a false break here, right? If you're looking at this high, this cluster in here, immediately reversed, and then they close it where they do it, right on the full square. Mm -hmm. So if we stay under this square, chances are we're rolling over for another push lower. Where that push is going to go, hopefully, if it if it materializes that we can hold the half square, that's great. Or we even hold the full square, gives us a higher low. But knowing how these commodity markets are, they're probably going to go for the stops that are in here. And so instead of thinking this was the end of the of the down wave, I think odds now favor that it ended a leg. Here was a counter trend. And the next leg, however it's going to unfold, may be starting. Sugar's been really strong. Mm -hmm. And look, look at the setup that we had in sugar, right? You had We had the false break, first move up. Pullback came right to where we wanted, which is it held the half square. Super strong move coming out of there, right? This looks like we're, we're we're catching the big move on the break. But then look what it does. False mm -hmm. break right at the top of this channel where it's been stopping every rally dead for the last year and a half. And we're getting some, you know, choppiness and reversal action right here. So we want to see, we, we want to watch sugar really closely for where does this next pullback go? Like, where do we, where do we come? Do we have to come all the way back to the apex of that triangle? You know, 18, can we hold the full square here? Right about, not, you know, 18, 90, 19. Mm -hmm. Don't know. We got to watch price action. But again, another market that spiked up into this, you know, August 15th, 16th, 17th area. Too many markets are reacting in this time frame to say, oh, it's just coincidence. What it means, we don't know yet. And that the next thing we have to look at is how does price act in the next few days? And that'll give us clues and allow us to sort of stack the odds in our favor of one thing happening over another. Another one that I've been, been talking about over the last few weeks, let's take a look at it. We saw this move coming up and said, hey, this is, looks like a false break. We pushed up, got a higher low on the pullback. We get a really strong move there. And then again, look what happens into this date. For Coco, it's the 14th, right around that 14th, 15th, 16th, all this past mm -hmm. week. It tried for multiple days, push, 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 even did a little false break here, right? We made a high here. Here we made a higher high and reversed. Yeah. And it's again, it's fighting at the half square. No problem. Not an issue. What what brings it what makes me sort of put my antenna out and say, okay, you know, put your head on a swivel, start looking both ways. All these different markets are doing it in this time frame. Yeah. ES, NQ, and all these different commodities. Something's going something, something, a significant cycle hit here. We don't know what it is yet. We don't know the ramifications, but price is already starting to react in across multiple markets that have nothing to do with anything, with mm -hmm. each other. Cocoa has nothing to do with crude oil. But there you have it. So let me let me show you one last one. Let me show you one that I that I'm that I'm interested in because it looks like it's leading this whole brigade. So coffee was going in this really really frustrating sideways pattern for almost a year right basically trading between this full square up here and the full square below tested it multiple times got below it a few times pushed right back up and then this pattern started developing 
And late last week, I mean, really the last couple of weeks, last month really started accelerating to the downside. We have, we have a really nice square here on mm -hmm. a four hour basis. Uh, it's 180 by 180. Um, there's divergences when you look at different indicators. We're on the half square. This may be leading the rest of the commodity complex. Like it may be the first to make its low and come out of here. I don't know why. I don't know what the fundamental reasons are. Um, I'm not calling the low because we've got nothing in place to, to say that. We just have this square and we have this half square that it's holding on. But I want to watch how the price action with coffee, because again, it's making this kind of low in this cluster of dates again that that are signifying a, a cycle is one cycle ended, another cycle's beginning. So we're going to watch coffee closely to see if it gives us clues, you know, is it going to have to go down and, and and test the full square to actually put in its low? You know, as this deflationary wave comes through, is it going to go sideways? Is it going to give us a setup where, you know, we can get a push out of here that gives us a higher high and then a pullback that gives us a higher low? But until that happens, until we see, you know, evidence of a bottom in these commodities after that 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 cycle hit, you know, early to middle of this past week, I think we gotta we gotta have caution and we gotta say that odds are favoring a deflationary wave of some magnitude is on the horizon. And some the really smart money and some people that that are in the know in each of these markets have acted on it already. They've sold into the highs, they've pushed price. I don't know that they've shorted, but they there's been enough selling. You know that price has had a reaction on the charts. Any thoughts from you, Barry, on this theory that's coming at me from the, from my chart review? I think you're on it, and uh, price is showing us that. And the bigger cycles, the next level up, is um, sort of pointing towards that. So we need to finish off this the sell off. You know, it seems like we kind of held it together all summer, right? Mm -hmm. And into the fall, and and uh, looks like we're going to clean up. In the winter, so you know, we'll see how the eventual cycles finish this up, and maybe next week we can do um, a little bit in depth about looking at where these commodities could end up. You know, <clears throat> sure, targets uh, and timing type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, just to actually, I want to do it for myself, ourselves, for us also. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But generally, I think uh, everything's okay. This is the cycle to follow. And, and what ends, you know, the end of this is what we want to really catch. Not necessarily, the, you know, the low tick, but, but finishing this up and the next cycle up is, I think, is the critical cycle. No question. And it's it's a matter of what, what you and I always talk about. You want to be early enough to catch the bulk of the move, but not so early where, you, where it's a coin flip or you don't have the odds in your favor. And that's constantly what we're trying to balance. So, um, what are you what are you looking at this week, Barry? Where where is your focus? It's a holiday week. I mean the 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 ultimate fuckery would be for them to make a big move this week when people aren't looking. Yeah, well, that's usually true, and it's probably about what's going to happen, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, and not even not even on you know Monday, Tuesday, but Wednesday or, or Friday is is would be right, the real, right. the real dastardly thing to do. But, you know, the S&P is really interesting this week because we did have that cycle that, you know, that I pointed out. Yeah. And, and if we, um, you know, everybody's used to the market rallying into Thanksgiving. So if we somehow don't do that, I think there is a chance for a good sell-off. So we got to really watch that carefully and watch those levels to make sure, you know, the market's trading above those levels or not. That's really important. As much as we have that, big low um in the SP. It's important to watch this high here because a lot of cycles came in and that just can't be an accident. Now on the flip side of that, if we somehow manage to rally and take out last week's high, mm -hmm. uh I would say we have a lot more to go for whatever reason. So that's just how we have to bracket that. Agreed. And an interesting thing, Barry, too, is this is a full disclosure for everyone. Barry and I don't talk about what we're what we're going to say before the show. We each do our independent review, and we come in and we and the fact that 
we're reaching a similar conclusion that this past week was a really important marker cycle wise and in many markets really adds to the significance for me because you came at it from a whole different perspective and you got sort of a similar uh sort of fulcrum week right it's a we're at a pivot point here mm-hmm. so it it always uh amazes me when different methods and different uh sort of people's analysis can come up with similar conclusions because it, it adds a stronger weight for me that it, it's 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 a significant spot and and soon enough in the next couple of days based on price action we're going to know you know probability wise what the ramification of this uh of this new cycle is so we'll see i'm going to be watching the commodities i'm going to be watching uh uh, the bonds and the dollar for clues as to you know the the flow of funds, and, and of course ES and and NQs are going to you know give us the the real read on on what people's risk ap- appetite is and whether that that high that we had come in in both markets this week is significant or not. So right. we'll see. Right. Mm-hmm. Anything else to add in pardon, Barry? That's all we got. I think uh, it's it's a short week, so not much. Um... And everything is sort of in 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 a sort of unfinished state. We have beginnings in place, but uh, no endings in place as of this week. So, and they're probably coming up uh, probably the week after Thanksgiving. So we'll watch for that. Sort of a transition week is how I'm looking at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other than that, um, you did a good job. It's a good insight. So we'll take that and see what we see can what do price it. has to say about it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right, everybody, have a great Thanksgiving, and um, we'll talk with you next week. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Ben. Have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye.